All right, I think we've got everyone in the room now. So it's great to see everybody again. Uh, as always, my name is Thomas Atkinson. I'm joined by Tyrone Abella over there. Hi everyone, yeah, welcome to tonight's Pepperstone webinar on five ways swing traders should use multiple time frame analysis. Yeah, so like always, we're doing a Learn It Live webinar. Tonight, we're gonna to be looking at some live trading action as well as talking about some swing trading, I guess, technicals and some theory and why we like to be swing traders. But I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out tonight, especially if you live busy lives, which we all do now in the, in the times of mobile phones. But swing trading is very popular and it's popular for a reason. That's not just because it's successful. It's also one of the best ways of trading if you're time poor or have scarcity. Uh, so if you're doing a day trading or you're trying to day trade, that can be very difficult. And I'm sure everyone sat there for three, four hours over the night and said, oh, wow, this is really tough actually having to sit in front of the charts and constantly be worrying about 15 minute, one hour, five minute candles, that kind of thing. So by using swing trading, you're actually able to look at the charts a lot less, but still get great results. So let's take a look at what we'll be covering tonight. First up, I'm just gonna talk about the risk warning as usual. The information provided in these videos has been produced by third parties and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone. The information has been provided without any altercation or verification. So just to change it up a little bit this week, Tyrone, what's been really interesting in the markets? What, what have we seen? Because it's very different to a few weeks ago. We're starting to see a lot of volatility, aren't we? Yeah, well, anyone who's been watching the the ASX 200 and the S&P 500 on the the Pepperstone platform in, in the CFD space, you'd have noticed some very big drops, uh, especially towards the latter part of last week. But we've had a little bit of recovery, so volatility has certainly yeah, come to play. And the indices have a, a direct uh, relationship with what happens in the currency market. So you would have seen you know, the yen react and um, and all of the, the cross pairs react as well. So from what's been yeah a fairly sort of flat area, we've, we've seen some good volatility over the last four or five days, and we're going to explore some of the yeah, opportunities potentially that we can take advantage of this tonight using the methods that we're going to talk about. I thought it was just a great one to talk about volatility because as traders, a lot of us love volatility because volatility gives us potential trades. It also gives us opportunity. So a lot of while a lot of people shy away from volatility in the stock markets, as traders or as swing traders, we're able to take advantage of some of these situations. So I thought I'd just bring up straight away tonight just this NASDAQ 100 chart that you can get in the Pepperstone platforms. And I want to talk about this double top pattern that we've got here. Now, we're not really going heavily into this tonight, but because it is Learn It Live, let's take a look at a live example from a week ago. You can see that we had this high reached followed by another high and then this intervening trough down here. And when that was broken, look what happened. We got our confirmation candle here of the break, followed up by that long leg doji candle and then that massive short selling candle that came through, which went for more than the distance of the double top. So I think this is just a great example of where stock markets, technicals are working or at play and even if we waited for the confirmation candle here of the break, we were able to get in and then that big move happened two days later. So it's just a great one, isn't it, Tyrone? Absolutely. And it's just um, poetry, really, the way it's gone, the right distance straight into the uh, the 200. We can see the green line there. Anyone familiar with our webinars will know that the green lines are always a 200 on our charts and it found support straight there. And it's yeah bouncing straight up to the neckline again. So it's really forming some nice technical levels. So it's certainly one to look out for if CFDs aren't something that you're normally looking at. Yeah, definitely take a look at some of these indices because they're really performing quite nicely on a technical basis at the moment. So I think that's something we're going to try to bring in a little bit more to this Learn It Live uh, webinars. And we'd love for you guys to give us feedback on that, uh, whether you like us to talk a little bit about the hot topic at the moment at the start, and then we'll get into what we're here to talk about, which is swing trading. So what are we going to be covering today? We're going to be covering what makes swing trading one of the most widely used trading techniques, what multiple time frame analysis is and how professional traders use it to find hidden opportunities, and then of course our Q&A session. Now, if you have any questions, please ask them throughout the webinar. We'll try to answer all of them either during the webinar, Tyrone might answer a few uh, if you're lucky, and then also we'll answer some of the great ones at the end. So that you guys get some of our experience with the markets. Hopefully we can tell you from our experience what you should be doing or what you could be doing better. 
So let's start off with what swing trading is. So swing trading really is in essence something where we're trading to hold positions for potentially days or maybe even weeks. Now that's a little bit different from traditional day traders. When you hear the term day trading, it can mean that we're in for only 15 minutes all the way up to potentially only a day in the trade. So it's really more of the kind of scalping side of things and a little bit less of the longer term or the medium term strategy. So swing trading really is more of the medium term strategy. And I think it's great if you, again, have jobs or work part time or any of those kind of things, because to be a day trader, you really need to have a lot of time in front of the charts, don't you, Ty? We've both done that. Absolutely. And the thing is, you've got to remember too, uh, a lot of people choose to trade uh, to give themselves a lifestyle that they that they want away from the, the everyday. Now, the thing with um, scalping the market is you do have to spend a lot more time in front of the charts. And you know, if you have to spend 10 or 15 hours in front of the charts, yeah, that might not be as, as lucrative as you know, the trading lifestyle might sound to everybody. So in a perfect world, even if you um, had a life to live, yeah, swing trading always comes into play because you can spend an hour or two hours a day you know, setting up your trades and just waiting thing, for things to play out. Whereas scalping the market requires a lot more chart time and a lot more of your attention on a regular basis. So it's perfect for the people who are looking for that trading lifestyle where you don't have to spend you know hours and hours in front of the charts all the time. And if you do have a, a job that you're you know, trying to supplement, then you can obviously carry on with that without it really impeding on your trading time. So it's really, really important for those sorts of people, which you know, for, for the most part is most of the people who want to trade. So another thing about swing trading is we're generally going to have a little bit less transactions, but they're often going to be high quality. And that's really important for our psychology. If we're day trading, we may have potentially five to 10, maybe even 15 trades open over 24 to 48 hour period. It is possible. Whereas with swing trading, it might come down to somewhere between four to eight trades per week. But the great thing about them is they're usually high quality. And if we correctly identify them, we won't be taking as many losses or as many you know, non-winning trades. And that helps our psychology because we've all been there where we've traded, we've had 10 great trades, then we have followed by three bad trades. And you really start to question, especially when they start stacking up in, in with you know next to each other. So we have a loss followed by another loss followed by another loss. That can be really difficult for us as traders to overcome. Um, and it starts to affect our psychology and then we lack, we don't trust our system and then we suddenly are onto a whole different trading system a few days later. And that's just not good for anyone. You really need to give a trading system its fair go. And generally, what you'll also find is with uh, swing trading techniques, you're going to have a better risk reward ratio as well. Most of the time, you're going to get two to one, three to one sort of trade. So just yeah, to carry on from what Thomas was saying, if you do have a couple of losses in a row, at least when you're swing trading, one you know, good trade or two good trades will generally put you well ahead of the game, even if you've had a couple in a row that haven't gone your way, because the risk reward ratios are always going to be better when you are trading with a swing type environment because you've got you know defined market movement that's and that's really the key you know where the market's either trending or the market's sideways and you're trading accordingly so we want to typically follow trends on the daily and four hour charts so they're the kind of charts that we'll look at so we'll just focus on like kind of five key steps tonight to maybe how to increase or improve your swing trading so one is potentially increasing your trading pairs for you to use your trading system on. So what this means is right now, a lot of traders may only be looking at the odd and the euro. Now that's great when potentially you're scalping or you're day trading. The problem with swing trading is you aren't going to see as many opportunities. So potentially getting more blue chip or higher quality kind of currencies in your trading arsenal may be worthwhile. And like we said before, if you can add indices like the NASDAQ, S&P 500, ASX 200, gold, oil, or any of the other major currencies, that would be great for your trading. So I think opening up your pairs a little bit when you're swing trading and keeping your system consistent can be quite successful because a lot of the methods will work across many different currencies and many different trading um, indices, etc. Step two is really trading the different time frames. Specifically, we're probably going to be looking at one hour, four hour, and daily charts. And what we mean by this is we'll often look at the daily chart to give us an idea of maybe the overlying trend. And then we'll be starting to look for technical signals on our four hour time frame. 
and then we will use the one hour time frame to generally get our kind of scalpel like entries so we talk about this a little bit in our course we have something called the pressing system which we've talked about a few times and that pressing system really is based around this kind of swing trading principle of daily four hour one hour isn't it tyron yeah that's right yep yeah, exactly right yeah so generally we should be able to find around three to five sometimes up to eight good opportunities per week with a selection of around 10 to 20 trading pairs you can always consider as well back testing these swing trading strategies uh, with the metatrader 4 or c trader or metatrader 5. the reason why you can back test even manually back test swing trading opportunities is generally they're very visual and they're based on pullbacks in an overlying trend so it's very easy for you to be able to put on Fibonacci's in those pullbacks, look for role reversal areas, look for things we'll talk about tonight and be able to pinpoint areas where you would be looking for that opportunity to enter. And therefore you can start to kind of test whether your system works or not. And then of course we want to spend time learning the way the market moves. So the times of day, Asian session, London session, US session and how the currencies react to different news events. So I think one thing we always bring up, non-farm payrolls, most people that trade currency are very aware of this. It happens once a month, generally in the first week of the month on a Friday. And that's when the US releases its big news to do with jobs. And we usually say that that is one where you want to stay away from that piece of news if you're a technical trader, because if you've ever watched one, and we always encourage you to watch a few of them, you'll notice the data comes out, it goes crazy in one direction, comes back, goes crazy potentially in another direction, and then may even end by the end of the day very close to where it started. And it often does that. I'd say there's a high statistic of it doing that. And the reason it does that is because it's so difficult to interpret that news for the market because it's just based on how many jobs were created over that month. So that's one we stay away from. And also you may want to consider potentially stay away from Mondays, especially if you trade in Australia. And the reason why that is, is because Australia opens, New Zealand opens, Asia opens, but the US hasn't opened yet. So we like to see London and the US opened, give the market some form of direction, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're just great trading days. Yeah, Monday can be very flat, especially if you're trading just the um, yeah, the Aussie dollar in the Australian market. We really are waiting for a lead from Europe or um, yeah, certainly the US on Monday night before any real action happens. It is very rare that we get big action on a Monday for yeah, any currency pair, really. And I think, like anything, you want to prove this to yourself. So why not just every Monday go and have a look at how the market reacts, do that for a few months, and then see what happens on the Tuesday and see how many times it reverses the Monday market decision. You'd be surprised. It's quite a lot of times. So we talk about moving averages a lot. It's in a lot of our webinars. There's a reason for it. It's a very simple, basic indicator that we can put on the charts. I won't talk about it too much today with Tyrone because I think we've covered it enough. But basically what you want to be doing is when the fast moving average, whatever that may be, moves through the slow moving average, generally you'll be looking for buys and the opposite for sales. So to put that into practice, if we're looking at a market like we are here, we'll notice that the market has crossed under the 200 moving average, something that Tyrone mentioned before. It's a very important moving average. And the 21 or the 20 and the 55 or the 50 have crossed up here. And you can see how long this trend has gone for. And that's important because as swing traders, we're really looking for these pullback points, but we still wanna be following this overall trend. So we'll talk about that again in the market in a minute. Here we've got just some dynamic support resistance of moving averages. And again, as swing traders, these pullbacks, this is obviously an uptrend. Anyone can see that, very, very clear. But during this uptrend, there's been significant pullbacks to this moving average. And when it's hit this moving average, it's pulled up into the direction. I know I'd rather be buying into a bullish market than selling against it, wouldn't you, Ty? Absolutely. And the thing is, you've got to remember, it's obvious to everybody that we're in an uptrend here, but the key is where did we join the uptrend? And that's where a lot of people get confused. Like they, they can see that the market is in an uptrend, but they're not really sure where to enter it. So ideally, you know, a strong market, you know, you, you could basically buy anywhere and you're probably going to be going up as long as the market uh, direction doesn't change. But in a perfect world, what you want to be doing is entering on a pullback. And yeah, as swing traders, we're always looking for those ideal pullback opportunities and pulling back to a, a moving average like the 200 is always a, a really good scenario. 
So let's just jump straight into the charts. We're here to learn it live, aren't we? So this is the daily US dollar yen. And the reason we want to bring this up is there's been, we've talked about a lot over the last couple of weeks. Again, go back and check out the different trades that we've taken through this particular US dollar yen bullish move. And now it's with the bearish move here. And what we can see is that the market has come back to a point where it previously broke through. So we had this resistance here, followed by another resistance, followed by a breakthrough. It then came back, did a quick roll reverse on the smaller time frame because this is a daily, and then it's gone all the way back up, come to basically the same highs over here. So it'd be a perfect, great take profit zone. And now it's come all the way back down to find some form of support here. And a lot of people be familiar with this type of candle. If anyone wants to, chuck it in the chat. But uh, this is an engulfing candle. So we're seeing the starts of basically some confirmation that potentially it's now reached its low at the same point as it previously found resistance, which is role reversal. And now we potentially could be looking for long positions in the US dollar yen. And that's also happened around this <coughs> 55 EMA. So it's come back down and it's started to find this support around here. So that's that dynamic support we were talking about. And look, the dynamic support, while not perfect, has found quite a few times that dynamic support has been the catalyst for it to start moving up. So we know that the market's respected that point. That's important. It hasn't crossed down. So we're still in an uptrend overall. If we look at it, everyone can see that. And this is the kind of thing that we're looking for as swing traders. We're starting to put together a story of why we might be interested or involved in this particular type of trade. So we'll just quickly jump back into the slides. I just want to talk about Fibonacci. So Fibonacci is another thing that swing traders use and we like to use. Obviously, we've got the 23.6, the 38.2, the 50, and the 61.8. Uh, a lot of times we've mentioned this, we love the 38.2 and the 50% Fib. The main reason why, well, there's so many reasons why, but the big one is when you think about it psychologically, if a move has made 100 pips and then it's come back around 38.2 pips, there's still going to be a lot of people thinking that's in a big upwards movement and therefore they're committed and they're interested in getting in it. At the 50% fib, that's 50 pips pull back on a 100 pip move. So there's still going to be a lot of people and that seems to be a great number as human beings. We love round numbers. We love 50% pullback. It's, it just seems like a good deal still. But then when it starts to come underneath the 50%, then you start to worry a lot of traders. So really 61.8, while it's called the golden fib, it's really like more the point of no return, isn't it, Tyron? If it doesn't pick up and it doesn't hold, uh, there can be a lot of problems in the market. And we don't really rate the 61.8 as strongly as we do the 38.2 or a 50. And that's because we love to be involved in aggressive markets as swing traders. We don't want to be involved in a market that pulls back so far that it starts to look bearish. If it's going up and then it pulls back 61.8%, it doesn't look that bullish anymore to us. We're swing traders, we want it to continue in the direction. Yeah, ideally the best trading conditions are gonna come when the market is in a healthy trend. So when the market pulls back so far, if it does come back all the way to a 61.8, you know, it, it, it's not as healthy as it was when it's pulling back only to the 38.2 or the, or the 50, because we like a two steps forward, one step back uh, approach in an uptrend and same on a downtrend. So when it's coming back um, past that 50% mark, it's just really having to go through so many zones extra uh, to actually move forward again. So when you think about it, you know, it's coming back, if it goes all the way back to the 61.8, to move forward again and to make a new high, it has to go all the way to, it has to break the 50 zone, it has to break the 38.2 zone, and then it has to make a new high. And that's before it's even actually you know, continued the trend any higher. So ideally, we don't want the pullbacks to be too deep if we consider the trend healthy. So another thing I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to swing trading is optimizing their entry. So we want to enter based on confirmation and not on gut feeling. It's really easy in Forex especially to enter just before a confirmation close of a candle. We've all been there, we've all been burnt by it. But as we always state, a candle can look very different two minutes before the end of an hour candle than what it does look like at the end of that hour. And we need to make sure that we're always waiting for confirmation. So we talk about it time and time again. You've got to treat your trading like a business, treat your swing trading like a business, and then wait for confirmation every time 
before you place entries. Don't just go on the gut feeling, I think that's going up or I think that's going down. We also don't want to break even trades necessarily with fixed pip amounts. Another thing that a lot of novice or beginner traders do, we want to use something like percentages instead. And what I mean by that, and I want to jump into that US dollar yen chart again, is let's just say we were interested in this particular trade. Let's just say we were, were looking at buying this trade and we bought it here for whatever reason, okay, just after it reached this new high. We may be placing our stop loss underneath these candles. Now, the way we do it, it's a little bit different to what a lot of people say. They say, oh, I'm going to place it one or two pips below the low. What I like to do and what Tyron likes to do and what we teach in our courses is that you actually break this candle down to a percentage and you say, okay, this candle here is 60 pips long. Therefore, we're going to give a 10 to 15% extra stop behind this low and that gives us the room so that if there's a market maker or someone that's pushing the market a little bit lower we won't get stopped out here's a perfect example if we were shorting this candle for whatever reason if we just had one or two pips above see how that just wicks and takes it out and then it goes off in the other direction nothing more frustrating in trading for sure so by using the percentage what we would have done is we would have taken the distance of this which would have been 42 we would have added 10 to 15% and then we would have used that as our stop loss. So 10 to 15% of 40 behind, that would have made up uh, our extra little bit of kind of cushion or layer of us, our protection. So we want to do the same thing when we're talking about break even points. If we are getting into this trade, let's say our aim was to potentially take profit off just up here. So this would be around 200 pips, pretty good. 200 pips for a potential stop loss of around 75 that's great but what we don't want to be doing is getting up every time we get up 50 pips we just break even the trade the problem with that is it's not market adaptive and we need to be market adaptive because what could happen in this trade is it goes up looks really great comes back down and then all of a sudden goes all the way back up and hits our profit. But we got stopped out because we broke even the trade too early. And how many times do we see this, Tyrone? How many times? Yeah, it absolutely, it happens a lot. So yeah, the confirmation is key. I know, I know we do harp on about that a lot, but it is really, really important. So yeah, but look, even with this trade, I mean, yeah, we could draw even a, a trend line now uh, on this. Like this is a daily USDN, but yeah, we've already had the confirmed uh, higher high and higher low in these three Peak. So we could almost join that up. If we can put a line there across the um, the last three troughs, Thomas will pop that line up now. Um, you can see that. Is this the one you want? Yep. And up to the top peak. And then, um, so as we can see, we've already got the sequence of the higher highs and higher lows, which is basically confirming a change of trend or a continuation of the long trend. But we can also draw a trend line that actually uh, joins up those three troughs. So that that is now a valid trend line according to our rules. You can see how it's come through here. So it's hopefully everybody right can see that. And, um, and that, that just shows how powerful, um, you know, when you combine yeah, several of the concepts together, you know, how, how valuable the information can be. And that, you know, add to that the engulfing candle that Thomas has pointed out and the change of trend. And yeah, things are looking good for the, the USD yen. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's definitely going long. Well, of course not. But yeah, the chances are that, yeah, there's a lot of support down here to say that um, yeah, there could be a lot holding it from going down. And that's what we're really looking for as a trader. And like Thomas said, when we are looking at swing trading, you know, this is a potential two, three, or maybe even four to one trade, depending on what you're aiming for. So in, in that in that regard, you know, it's a, it, this is, these are the opportunities we're looking for. You start to score them up, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully everybody can uh, can see the things that we've talked about because this is actually a really you know, interesting setup. Yeah, it is. So we're just with that break even and breaking down to percentages, if we have something that's 200 pips long here, what we we're going to want to do is we're going to say, okay, we need to give a percentage every time to where we break even. And maybe that's 65% of the way. When it gets 65% of the way, we deem it to be the point of no return. And therefore, if it did come back any like after 65% was never going to be probably successful. So we're giving it 
room to breathe. And that's really important in swing trading, often overlooked. Uh, I think a lot of people often overlook that. So again, let's just jump back into these slides and go on to the next one. So we talked about role reversal before. Most people that attend these webinars regularly will be familiar with it. We have covered it several times. I'll be very quick here. So it's where basically resistance has been reached. It's been reached generally several times. And then when it's broken through, it's come back down and it's tested that resistance and that resistance has become support. So again, here's role reversal. It's pretty much a swing trader's best friend. Role reversal is the essence or the base of what you should be doing as a swing trader. If you see these kind of things occurring, these are the successful types of the beginning of a successful trade, followed by Fibonacci over the top, followed by potentially dynamic support in this case of moving averages. And then we look for things like candle patterns. So if you're putting those things together, you can have a lot of success with swing trading with role reversal. And it's very, very important for you guys to learn. So as Tyrone alluded to before, we want to target higher R multiples. So what that means is we want to try to get more than at least one to one with our trades. So if we're risking $100, we should always be returning with swing trading over $100. And it makes sense because if we're swing trading and we're following trends, the trend should be aggressive and the trend should continue. So we're taking the pullback of that trend we expect it to go up to the next trend high and then hopefully break that and continue on. So often in swing trading, you can get some amazing trades. You can get five, six to one, even up to eight to one, it can happen. And they're the type of trades where if you're risking $100 and you're getting back seven or $800, you can take a lot of losses and still be well ahead. So that's what gets us excited about being swing traders. You can make some amazing returns. If you risk 1%, which may not sound like much, and we're getting six, seven, eight hundred dollar returns on that hundred, then you're beating out a lot of hedge fund managers and a lot of like fund managers in general in one trade over that year. It only takes one literally to beat them, and that's pretty uh, exciting and, to me. And if you are applying a, a moving average crossover strategy, if that is part of your strategy, that they are the ones that often do go the seven, eight to one because there's really no uh, saying when a trend is going to end, and if it is strong enough. Um, a moving average crossover generally is the beginning of the longer trends as well. So that's where your R multiples can really, really increase. The biggest no, we've ever you. had, we've had a, probably a, a 10 or 11 um, multiples, probably the biggest we've ever had without actually interfering with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, four, five, six to one are very, very common on moving average strategies. So yeah, if you can get a few of those, you don't need too many trades to go right for you in a month. So they're the ones you want to be aiming for. That's exactly right. So sometimes good looking trades uh, will not always meet your criteria. And, and I say that uh, because sometimes you're gonna be looking at a trade and you're gonna go, oh, that looks really good. It scores well, it's in my trading system, but it isn't going to be a one-to-one -one trade if we're being honest with ourselves. If we're being honest, where's our first kind of point of issue? Where do we think we're gonna need to take profit? If that's only $80 for our $100 risk on the stop loss, then we're going to have to practice discipline. And discipline's a big one. And uh, it's definitely something that a lot of people struggle with in trading again. And we've actually got a special one this week because we've got something where one of the students has sent in kind of their analysis. And I think this is a great case and point of where we need to practice discipline or you know wait for the trade. So we've done all this work and you can see here, there's a couple of different uh, things going on. We've got our moving average cross. We've got our, our daily class A bullish divergence here. We've also got our daily descending fib retracement and we've got this support and all of these things going on. Now, this particular trade, all of these things have been set up and the person is, is trying to find a way of getting into this trade, but you'll notice they have a pending order here. And the reason why they have this pending order here is they're waiting for the market to effectively create a double top. And until it creates a double top and breaks through this intervening trough or neckline here, it's not going to be an active trade. So this is just something where you might have these setups, but this, is, this could potentially look completely different. The odd could be over here tomorrow and it would no longer be a good trade because they're waiting for that confirmation close. They're waiting for the market to come back, break through this low here 
and then they'll be interested in getting involved in this trade. You can see their stop loss would be above these two highs and their take profit would be just before the lowest point over here of 70.50. And the reason they're taking it just before is because you never want to go for 100% of what you're looking for in swing trading. You want to be going for generally around 80 to 90% of what you think you can get. And that's because the market will often just about get there and then completely reverse and, and take you out. And that is very frustrating. You're better off taking the easy pips. Yeah. And I really want to, you know, I guess put bring across the importance of this uh, setup. Like this is using this now. This is a, a Presic score. For those who who have done our webinars, you'll know what the Presic system is. But this Presic score is, I think it's about two hundred and twenty or two hundred and thirty. So it's a very very high scoring trade. But the detail that um, this student has gone through to actually make sure that he's ticked every single box in multiple time frames to to really give this chance um, for this to work out. Is impeccable, and and if everybody applied this sort of analysis to, and, and it's really this is what you need to do to become a professional trader. This is the sort of analysis that you need to to put in because you're covering every pot potential consideration in different time frames, and doesn't mean that it's going to work out. Well, of course, that's we know that that's not the case, but it gives you every chance to to see that you've covered every base. You've put the boot on the other foot. You know where the resistance is. You know where the support is. And just as importantly, you know exactly what's going on in the other time frames around the the setup time frame. So, yeah, this video is going to be recorded. So I, I, I encourage people to have a look at that um, in when you get a little bit of time and pause it and really take notes on um, how the analysis has been carried out on that because every trade should be designed like that. Yeah, so it's just it, it just shows you that you're going to have a lot of write-ups. You're going to do a lot of work in swing trading in terms of being able to have potential setups and then just not always going to work out. You're going to have to wait for that confirmation. And, and moving from day trading to swing trading can be tough because in day trading, you're often just market ordering orders when you see it. Whereas swing trading is more about being kind of the, the, the hunter. It's more about being patient, waiting there, and then eventually you'll get your prey or your currency um, order in. And, and then when you do, you generally have more success. So that'll be great. I just want to bring up this euro quickly. I just think it's one that, that's worthwhile looking at. So we can see here we've got that nice big sell-off that's come through the euro. If we take a look at the weekly, the market's generally been on the downtrend. It's kind of had this big pull up here, but found resistance across this point. And now it's come back down to this low and then retraced. So the reason I want to bring this up, and it may not be enough points yet, but again, we're looking for these things, is that we've reached this 50% fib. We've really reached this 38.2, which was the previous support kind of line over here. And we've got that nice candle here. And a few people might know what this is in the, in the chat room, but basically we've got that shooting star daily candle. So shooting stars, pretty bearish kind of candle. It's what we're looking for. Great thing about that is generally the market will continue to sell off the next couple of days. So again, when we're trading, we want to have enough points. So if we put this through our Presic score system, we'd have to figure out whether we had enough reasons to be in. But you can see we're starting to present a case of the sell-offs happened, it's come up, it has hit a fib, but that's not just enough. It has to also meet other criteria. We need three to five reasons at least to be in this trade. So that's a good one there. Another one we've talked about, it's a little bit less of probably the swing trade, but it will become a swing trade, is the gold trade here. So what, what happened was gold was in a bit of a kind of channeling pattern over in this zone between this 1180 to 1212 area. And then what happened is it broke through strongly off that massive volatility that we saw a few, well, literally only a few days ago, a week ago. And when it broke through, we can start to look for basically pullbacks into this zone here specifically into this 1210 kind of a zone. And this is really important zone because not only was it the previous body highs over here, and we could see how many times it hit. Does that start to remind you of that roll reversal area we saw in the example? Resistance, resistance, resistance. Oh, that might come become support if it does come down to this point. And look what else we've got here. We've got our 55. We've also got our moving average being the 21 EMA here. And by the time the market, if it was to come back down here, you're probably going to find that as this is a lagging indicator, it might be getting close to crossing that 55, 
at the same point that it becomes dynamic support as a double dynamic support for the market. And this is the kind of thing, this is this one gets me excited because this is the type of trade where you're starting to see so many reasons potentially to get into it. You've had the channel, the channel's broken. What do we know about channels? We know that channels should continue on for the distance of the channel. So did it do that? Not yet, it hasn't completed that kind of, uh, you know, except like what we expect from it. So then again, what we are doing is we're drawing up things like we're drawing Fibonacci's, we're starting to try to come up with enough reasons. So we can see here there's that 38.2, but there's a nice 50 a little bit lower here, and that goes into these bodies. So maybe somewhere around this zone, if we saw it come back down to this zone, and then we saw an engulfing candle, a hammer candle, all these types of things, then we're going to have a high pressing score, or we're going to have a high score for our trade. And that is the kind of trade, that's the golden type of trade, isn't it, Ty? Uh, the pressing score on this, if, if this comes back to the, so that 12, 10 area at the bottom, at the top of that channel there, this will uh, be a pressing score through the roof because it's got so many things that uh, we've just talked about. But just as importantly, we can see that, um, as, as, we, as Thomas has alluded to, the channel distance where we're expecting to take profit to be, um, is at another level of what was previous support. So we can see that the, the top of that channel, you know, not long ago around the sort of the June, July area, we can see that the market did find support at that level. And if we go back a little bit further, there it is again in November of 17, we can see very clearly that um, that was a very uh, serious support for gold, uh, which made it bounce up quite heavily. So we would you know, very easily expect that it's going to have a lot of trouble getting through that zone on the first pass. But if it does come back to the 110, as uh, to the 1210, sorry, and starts to shoot up from there, there's a pretty easy 30 or 40 dollars on gold that has really not much interruption in front of it. Yes, and and this is the type of thing that we love proving in the market. Again, if we're swing traders or any type of trader, if we're taking the distance and we're seeing a pattern, and that pattern pushes the market into a previous support level then it means that the market must have been preparing or setting up psychologically for that zone to potentially be reached. So when that break happens, we wait for that pullback down here, we wait for that swing. We're now in a short-term uptrend because it broke past these highs and we can get involved. And then we can continuously get involved. What if the market broke through here? Again, it breaks through, maybe reaches this type of resistance. And then there was some conjecture or some resistance here and it comes back down and it swings into this point. We start to activate all the different reasons that this point might be good. We get enough points together in our business plan or our swing trading setup, and then we get involved again. And we just continuously follow those swing high lows based on those kind of principles. And you can see even in gold, it worked over here. There was that previous support over here. It was support here. It broke down reach the same support here, the trend is down, so we don't want to be counter trending this, and then it comes back up and then it creates this beautiful shooting star candle. And it is important that this is still a shooting star candle, even though it looks like it was bullish at the end. And that's because when you're looking at candles, it should be more based around, again, percentages. And we've talked about that in another webinar, probably don't have time tonight, but this is still a shooting star candle as far as we're concerned. It's a nice rejection candle. The sellers have regained control and you can continue with that trend. And let's say we got involved in this. We shorted here at the break of that shooting star, placed our stop loss at that 140 or $1.40, and it went as far as $9. So that's pretty exciting. It's very good. All right, well, I'll hand it back over to Tyrone. Do you want to say okay, something? We can, we, can, oh, we can move on to the next slide now. So we can, um, yeah, so we can, I've got a, a few uh, questions here that would need to be asked. So we'll, we'll move on and. Um... Sure. So the last one I just want to go through here was step five, which is create a trading system based on multiple entry criteria. So we've got the simple moving average that we talked about tonight. We've got support resistance that we've talked about, things like role reversal, candle confirmation, Fibonacci, and then, um, of course, if we've got some of those together, we can use those as a points-based trading system. And this is really basic. Obviously, you're going to have your own one, um, but this is the kind of way that you want to set up your trading. Try to treat it like a business. So I'd like to just, I guess, hand it over to some Q&A. Well, that's pretty much the end of tonight. So did you have some questions there, Tyrone, you want to answer? 
Yeah, we'll, we'll pass it over to the moderators and he can um, give us some of the more popular questions that we had tonight. Hey guys, thanks a lot for the for the webinar. Um, yeah, let's let's go on for the, with the first question. When doing a top-down analysis, suppose if the I time frame, say D1, is showing a downtrend and the H4 is showing an uptrend, but the H1 is showing a downtrend sideways, which trend should we follow to place a trade? Yep. So just with that one, um, it comes down to the type of trading style that you're applying. So if we're looking at a scalping type trade, we'd be paying attention to the middle time frame, which will be the, the four hour direction and basically using the one hour to enter. But if we were applying a, a type of swing trading strategy on that one, we'd definitely be taking um, advantage of what the daily is telling us. So if the daily trend is up, we'd only want to be really swing trading in the direction of the daily trend because we are looking for a bigger, more sustained move. So that really comes down to scalping or swing trading, whichever one you're going to go with. And yeah, basically use the time frame, the larger time frame for, uh, for the swing trade and the smaller time frame for the scalp. Perfect, thank you. Uh, let's go on with the second one. Uh, which time frame do you take for candle confirmation? For example, if you have a bullish engulfing pattern on 30 minutes and a farming bullish candle on the one hour, do you go in or do you wait for the one hour? Okay, so that um, that's actually very similar to the previous one, but in a in a different aspect because what we're using is a candle confirmation, which is great. But what we're, it's basically the same principle. If we're looking for a scalping type trade, we're going to take the confirmation on the smaller time frame. So the engulfing candle on the 30 minute confirmation, once that's closed, we'd be entering on that one for a scalp. But again, for a swing trading opportunity, we'd be looking for the one hour and the 30 minute. The 30 minute is not going to go anywhere. That's, if that's an engulfing um, close, that's going to still remain that way when the hour closes. So if the hour confirms the engulfing candle as well, that's the one we're going to be waiting for because we are looking again for a longer sustained move just purely because of the risk reward ratios and the bigger time frame. Perfect. And uh, one last question we have. Uh, how do you guys factor in swaps when swing trading? Yes, okay, so we, we, yep, uh, Tom yep. will play that one. So with, with swaps, I think the thing is that you're generally not going to necessarily be in a swing trade for that long a period of time. So if you're taking, let's say, a six-month trade, which you generally won't be, then swaps become very, very serious. But with swing trading, you may still only be in for a maximum of two weeks, maybe a month. You generally won't be in longer than that, at least in the Forex markets. Uh, you can be, but you generally won't be because you're trading daily four hour type candles. So we do factor it in, but just think about it this way, that a lot of, obviously one side of the currency is generally potentially going to be positive. If you're buying US dollar yen, it's going to be positive. It's not a problem. But also you should be looking for more than one-to-ones. So if you're looking at more than one-to-one -one trades and you're you know, getting five or four-to-one trades, the swap can easily be absorbed by those wins. And I think that if you're focusing just on the swap, uh, that can be a bit of a problem, but you shouldn't be in the trades probably more than, than a month generally. So I don't think it's too too serious. Mm. Quite often, look, you'll find that the majority of good swing trades that are two to one, three to one that are taken on the one hour and four hour time frame generally play out within a week. So if swap is gonna you know, affect how much take profit your, um, where your take profit level is, then it's probably not really a swing trade because you're, you're very rarely going to get good one-to-one -one swing trades. Most of the time, you're going to go for that two-to-one and three-to-one where the swap is, yeah, it becomes not so much insignificant, but not as big a factor. But if it's going to reduce your you know, ratio you know, below a one-to-one, -one, then it's certainly something that needs to be considered and you probably need to stick clear of it or at least um, stick clear of the ones that are actually a negative swap. If it's a positive swap, well, then um, it's in your favor anyway, so. Mm. All right. Well, I think that's All the right, end guys. of the questions for this week. Oh, thanks, Marco. Uh, I just want to mention to everybody that we do do um, like a kind of two-week webinar, obviously, with the Pepperstone platform. Then we've got a weekly or every second week webinar um, just on our platform as well. So if anyone enjoys these learn live sessions, um, you can feel free to just go to fxevolution.com forward slash webinar and you can sign up there and you can just do it every week, I guess, with us, which is great. And 
our next one is tomorrow night at the same time that this one started, so 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So anybody who'd like to join us, we're going to look at the live markets again and have a really good in-depth look at uh, what is potentially playing out tonight and uh, throughout the day tomorrow to see if there are any trading opportunities that we can take advantage of, hopefully uh, during the webinar, so we can apply the techniques that we've actually seen. So pop your details in the webinar form that we've got on the screen now and um, yeah, register and we yeah, look forward to seeing you tomorrow night as well. Yeah, great. All right. Thank you very much, Marco. Thanks, everybody, for joining another week. And uh, we'll see you in probably two weeks' time. be great. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, Good night. Everybody.